So welcome to another laser review slash giveaway for people that haven't seen these videos before. Basically, these laser engravers are hot commodities. There's a lot of companies on the market. Um, I've reviewed quite a few of these and I keep getting offers to review new machines. So instead of keeping all of these machines in the shop, which I really don't need, I've decided to couple my reviews for the, the lasers, which um, fulfill my obligation to the company with them having giveaways. So this giveaway is for the Laserman Flying Bear laser engraver. And this is a five watt laser engraver. And I have uh, tested one of these before and um, in general, they're more powerful than I thought they were going to be. I didn't think I would test a five watt again, just because now that I have a 20 watt in the shop, I don't really have a lot of reason to use this after using something like that. But the price point for this laser is by far the least expensive of anyone I tested. And they arguably start to get into an affordable realm for, for people that um, don't have a lot of, of free cash floating around. I believe this one, you could find it online now for under $300 and it comes with a rotary as well as um, an air pump so that you already have two of the components that you need to get started with this already included with the kit. So that's basically what this is. Um, I'm going to run this exactly how I've run the other giveaways. They've been working fairly seamlessly, um, which is going, but I'm uploading this on Wednesday, not Sunday. So this will run for a week and then I will announce the winner, which is chosen through an automated system online. So I don't actually pick the winner to remove uh, human bias. And then I ship them the laser and that's pretty much it. There's no purchase necessary. The way I announce the winner is three ways. Um, I tag their original comment and tell them they won. I make a community post on my page which says who the winner is. And I also pin a comment by myself at the top of the page with who the winner is. And then they can email me and I email them back. If you are contacted in any way other than that by my YouTube page, and you can see what my handle and my picture is, um, because some people will have my picture, but you can tell it's not me because the name will be a little bit different. That is not me, it is spam, so, so please don't respond to it. So just please be wary of skeevy people online. Um, I don't want anyone getting, getting uh, entrapped by that. But other than that, pretty straightforward. Um, I wanted to play around with some inlays for this project. So that is what the build project's gonna be. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I plan on utilizing this in other projects. It worked really well. And in general, for a five watt laser at this price point, I think this is a really great, great machine. So this video review is going to be for the Flying Bear uh, laser engraver from Laser Man. This is a 5 watt laser. I decided to do this one for one big reason and that is because I kind of pulled up all the numbers on the lasers I've reviewed and you could pause this, I'm not going to go through all of it. And by far the Flying Bear, it's $359 on Amazon right now. Through their website it's $289. So this laser is $210 cheaper than any of the other lasers I've tested and the price point can be below $300 which is really extraordinary for the quality of this laser. I just think at that point it starts to get a little more affordable for some people, so that's why I decided to do it. So basic overview, this laser utilizes a, a one large drag chain on the side, as well as these, um, these cable covers. So the cable management is pretty good on this machine. Um, the one big downside is if you want to make a cover for this, these make the height of this quite tall. So making a cover is going to be um, a lot more costly. It's going to be a much bigger apparatus in your shop. This one also comes with a rotary, which is very similar in quality to the rotary I got for the Ortor Laser Master 3, as well as um, an air pump, which works pretty well. So that is another bonus. A lot of times with these machines, and I tell people you need venting for them, the honeycomb is useful, but you could kind of make one of those yourself if you don't want to shell out the hundred bucks or so for one of these. But with this one, not only are you getting the laser, but you're getting 
um, some air filtration as well as the rotary to get you started all for that price. So like I said, a very well-rounded machine that will get you up and running. So those are the, the plus sides of this. The, the obvious plus is that this machine works very well. The downsides are for the focus on the machine. A lot of these machines come with standalone pieces. I don't love that because in a shop like this, stuff like this is very easy to lose. But they do give you this little slot to store it in, which I guess is a bonus for, for that. Um, the other downside is these these tracks. I've said this before. If you're in a woodworking shop like I am, dust accumulates, and these these rubber wheels on the bearings tend to slip on these exposed tracks uh, when there is dust in the shop. So that is another reason to make a cover. The air pump in the back works really well. The problem I found was you have this nice screen which will let you do pretty much anything with the laser, which is, is nice. The problem is I believe this machine was kind of designed to use this, this setup all the time, but I've gotten so used to using um, light burn for all of these machines switching over to a setup like this can be a little bit cumbersome now you can use this machine with light burn you do not have to use this panel but it, it you could tell it was this machine was designed to use the panel and the air filter is the main issue i have with this from the instruction booklet that is supposed to work whether or not you were going through the panel or what i'm using in most of the video is light burn on my computer but I can only get this to work if I set up this function going through the panel. Um, if I send a job to the machine right from Lightburn, this will not come on. Now I kind of figured out a way to get that to work by if you just lightly touch these two wires together, this will come on all the time. I could show you what that sounds like. So in the video you will see me playing around with these wires. and you can get this to come on. But if you go to the panel, the adjustments don't work. It stays at 100%, which honestly I would use anyway. But that is the one downside to this machine. Now if you go through the panel, and you go right to engraving and it's it's saying there's no SD card but if you download a G code and go through here um, the, the air filter works fine it comes on the way it should so that is the one big downfall whoever wins this machine maybe they could troubleshoot that a little bit better than myself like I said I got it to work by just playing with the wires a little bit but that is a little bit of a pain not too much because most of these air um, components that you get for these machines you have to turn them on before you start start with the machine anyway but in general aside for those couple little issues and the problem with this is like it says there's no SD card if you want to send your jobs through this display you have to download everything as a G code onto the SD card that comes with the machine and upload it through here and sometimes the G code doesn't transfer so they recommend a transfer program and all that sort of stuff starts to get really cumbersome for a machine like this like I said I'm used to using light burn. If I didn't already have that background, this probably wouldn't bother me as much. But I essentially kind of will mess with the settings on here, but I bypassed engraving my projects through here and I just go right through through light burn. But all in all, a very solid little machine. I liked this one a lot, and you cannot beat the price point. So this is my first run with the machine using the touch panel. It has limit switches, so it homed right away nice and quickly, which was nice. Sometimes if you have homing issues, usually when I have homing issues in the past, it's because of improper belt tension, not really the machine. So this is just a quick way to send it home to make sure the tension's proper. And then a better way to tell that is to then do a quick engraving. 
If you've been watching these videos, you know I engrave my logo really quickly. I don't spend a lot of time messing around with the numbers on this. You can tell by this piece of plywood that all these machines perform differently with different sets of numbers. So you usually just kind of plug something in. This is going to engrave this in 13 minutes. I stopped this a little short because I didn't line this up properly. It was going to hit one of my other engravings, which I didn't want to do. But this just gives me a nice right out of the box um, ideal of what this machine is capable of. You can see, even though I had to stop it short, it's a nice solid engraving. It's comparable to all the other ones on the sheet. And if I spent some time um, perfecting the numbers, this would even be a, a crisper engraving. So I was playing around with the touchpad a little bit. And like I said in the intro, it is nice, um, especially if you don't want to spend a lot of money on software. You can probably use this with open source software coupled together with this and get it to work. It moves the laser around. You can play with all the settings. And like I said, you can upload G code to this. They already had a file in this um, machine so i decided to do that because this is going to be preset so i wouldn't have to really do anything and i could see what a little bit of a bigger engraving was going to do but you can see with using the touchpad it's really nice i just went into engrave the g code was already in there and then once it starts you could see all the settings you could play around with now this is what i was talking about with the, the air filter right now the air filter kicks on because i'm using the g code through the machine the problem I was having when I, is when I was sending um, jobs directly from Lightburn to the machine, the air filter wouldn't kick in, and that's when I had to go and play around with the wires. But this is the first, um, the, well, I guess technically second engraving, and this one came out quite nicely. This was on maple, and the first one was on oak, so you won't get as much of a texture, texture showing through with the maple. And um, you obviously can't feel this, but it, it leaves a nice indent. It's not a, a superficial mark on the wood. It, it really burns it in there nicely. So then I wanted to play around with how this would cut. I knew this wasn't going to cut um, really thick pieces of wood because that's not what the 5 watt is designed to do. You can see I have quarter inch plywood here and I could almost get it through but it, I couldn't get it to go all the way through. If I really wanted to play around with this, I think I could have gotten it to cut through this, but at that point, you're, you're almost wasting time. If you wanna be cutting through quarter inch plywood, this is not the machine for you. It would just take forever. I think some of these circles have 10 or 15 passes on them. So I have a lot of, of thinner stock around the shop. This is eighth inch plywood, which a lot of the, the, the files I have bought off of Etsy use this thin plywood. It cut through that in three passes without a problem. So this will cut through materials, but if you want it to cut through thicker stuff, I do not recommend it. And their website has a lot of useful information. And on there, it even says that you want something thinner than four millimeters. If you put that into inches, it's 0.157. Um, and if you transfer that to, to fractions, you're kind of looking at, like I said, less than this top one's on a half inch, that top one's an eighth of an inch. Um, according to their numbers, you could probably get through 530 seconds, but I think that's pushing it. Um, like I said, it didn't really go through a quarter inch, and I was using eighth inch. It was going through that really easily. So there's plenty you can do with this machine, but if you want to focus on cutting through thick, thicker lumbers, like I keep saying, I don't recommend it. You kind of see with my tape measure how close I got going through that quarter inch, but I just couldn't get it all the way through. So I don't, I don't make it, um, I make it known that I don't love rotaries. I just don't have really a use for them in my shop. But obviously if a company sends me one, I'm going to test one. So whenever I use them, I kind of test them pretty quickly. The standard is you're going to have to unplug um, one of the accesses and, and plug in the rotary. 
and then you can you can have this set up. One of the reasons I don't like these is because it's usually a big to do to change all your settings to get it to work and then you just have to change them back. In an ideal universe if you really want to use a rotary it's it would almost be beneficial to have two machines because then you could have one set up for normal work and one set up as a rotary. It's kind of like those lucky people that have two table saws, one dedicated with a dado stack in it and one for straight cuts. But it's it's not a pain. This was one of the easier ones to set up. It's just like I said, you have to go through and change a bunch of stuff. In this one, I um, there's a setting in the panel to turn on rotary. And I had this problem with one of the older machines as well. You have to change some of the how light burn reads the coordinates in order to get this lined up and get it to cut. So once I had all of that uh, played around with, I was able to get an engraving on this. Um, you'll see I'm kind of moving it around by hand to get it out of the way. And then this is another problem you have. You have to input a lot of numbers, diameters, based on what you're making, based on your object. Um, mine was a little too skinny, so I went through and I just kind of clicked up one of these numbers. Like I said, I'm doing all of this through Lightburn because that's what I'm used to doing it with, but you could do it with the panel. And in order to get it to work, you're going to want to use it from um, user origin. Usually I'm running this on absolute coordinates and you can see it will just go hit the side of the, the panel. Once you have the laser set up with the rotary, you want to come in here and change it to current position. I forgot that that is what you have to do. I kind of learned that on Jakoda. Once I had that, it was, it was pretty easy to use this. These were cutting pretty quickly. I have this, this is bamboo. It's a bamboo cup that I keep wrenches and, and spoons in. And in a second, you'll see what that looks like. So this was a really nice engraving. Once I, once I got the numbers right, it turned out nice and clean. For um, comparison's sake, the other engraving on here, this one in the bottom left-hand corner, is the Jakoda, the first Jakoda I tested. So definitely comparable to a laser that's a couple hundred more dollars. And then that is basically, this cup's kind of actually turning into a neat little side project. So then I had a lot of problems with um, the machine. It was cutting things elongated. And this was also when I started playing around with the wires for the air filter. I probably didn't make this crystal clear um, in the beginning of the video. These wires are supposed to be permanently attached. And when they are, the, the air filter only works going through the panel. But for some reason, if I very lightly touch them like you see in the video, I can get the air pump to be permanently on. That was a workaround in order to get this to work for the machine. Um, I don't really know the inner workings of electronics of why that is the way it is, but for the winner, that is how I got it to work when I used it to cut, and then I just completely unplugged them when I was done working. And this is kind of an example of that. And unfortunately, and I was kind of embarrassed about this, this was happening because I never switched back from the rotary setting in the display. I had to turn off rotary in the display on the machine. And then once I did that, everything was fixed. It took an embarrassing amount of troubleshooting to, to figure that out that I had forgotten to do that. So then for the build project for this, like I said, I've been wanting to get into inlays. It's not something I've been interested in doing by hand because it looks quite tedious, but I thought because these lasers cut such a fine point that I'd be able to make some inlay veneers. So I found a pattern that was somewhat simplistic. There's not a lot of connecting shapes. You could see I tried it with a circle pattern I've used before, but the dots were getting too small and it was getting a little fumbled up. So I had this other pattern already downloaded on my computer. I get a lot of these files. I buy them off Etsy and I just went through and I cut this. Now I am planning on using this technique in the future. And when I do this the second time around, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. One of the problems you have with this veneer is it's so thin as the laser heats it up, it bends ridiculously um, and you will get some off cuts. So one of the things I'm going to have to do is make some sort of mechanism that will hold this veneer as flat as possible. 
possible. The other thing I need to work on is the transfer. When I lifted this up, all the pieces kind of got messed up and turned around. And because the veneer had lifted during the heating process, some of these didn't fit perfectly into the spots. Next time around, before I lift anything, I'm probably gonna put some tape on top of it so it holds the whole pattern together. Be much easier to deal with that way. So then what I'm going to do is, the other thing I'll do when I permanently do this is I'll probably take the time to break out my vacuum press. But for now, I'm just going to glue this pattern onto a piece of plywood I had laying around the shop. Um, pretty simple stuff. I have a nice big weight to weight it. Um, the, uh, during this time, I found on their website, they have all the download links that you need for the driver, the firmware, and then like I said, they have a download for transferring your G-code. All that stuff, like I keep saying, I don't want to bother with that. I got this to work fine through Lightburn, so I didn't have to worry about dealing with all of that sort of stuff. But it is an option for people that want to primarily use just the touchpad. So I wanted to obviously play around with two-tone with this. Um, I get a little bored with, with brown and, and the maple look. So this black stain I used for a customer and I actually really liked it. So I went through and I, I, I stained the outside black. I knew putting this blue tape on there was futile because this stain's gonna bleed everywhere. But I thought I might be able to even do another tone as almost a frame, but you can see that didn't work out. So then I had to go through and put all of the pieces back in place. This looks extremely tedious, but it was actually kind of nice to sit down in the shop. I put on a podcast I like, and I, I glued all this back into place. Like I said um, earlier, I'm going to probably use a couple different techniques this time so that all of these pieces don't get mixed up and then it will be much easier. For the most part, they fit back into place really well, but the parts where the veneer had bent a lot because of the heat I had to use a hammer to get some of them back in place but this was pretty successful I only had a couple spots where I uh, the two corners I lost two pieces so I couldn't put those in but in general this is a really intricate uh, inlay that I was able to recreate and it, the biggest effort was gluing these pieces back into place which I, I think I have an easier way to do that the next time around the laser laser did all of the the heavy lifting on this one and then that is basically what it looks like so I was pretty happy with with um, trying this out